Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to another tutorial about Vala and GTK. In the previous lesson, we created our full stack switcher with a couple of files, the header bar and the window interacting with each other dynamically in order to change the content of the stack in the body from the stack switcher that is present in the header. And this is the current result that we're having. The stack switcher works. The thing that I want to do now, I want to show you how to implement a GTK dialogue, a built-in native dialogue, in order to have a nice little uh, pop-up, something that we will prompt the user when they click on the add button in order to add a note. Uh, we could add a note in uh, many different ways. Uh, we could also have, when you click here, something slides up, or we could also have uh, always showing text area where the user can type and hit enter. We're gonna explore all these different situations together throughout this series of tutorial. But the first thing that I wanna do, I wanna implement a nice GTK dialogue just to show you how you can do it as well. So let's get started. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable, and affordable VPS in the cloud, skyseal.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. First of all, let's create our dialogue and you can write it wherever you want. For the sake of consistency for now and just to make it easier to follow, I'm gonna just create a new dialogue right after the add button. But uh, later we're gonna improve our code a little bit. So for now, let's create a new variable called dialogue. And we can, of course, because GTK is very consistent and the namespaces are very easy to remember, we can create a new GTK dot dialog. The GTK dialog uh, comes with no options if you use the default class, but it comes with a bunch of options if you use some extra classes. So in this case, I want to, as usual, tap the documentation, the official Valadoc documentation to see what options we have uh, when we create a new dialog. Let's search for gtk.dialog. And of course, it's going to be the first result. And if we scroll down, of course, here there's a long description that you can read if you want to learn how the dialogue behaves and all the options, you should definitely read it. Here there's a C example. This is not a uh, Vala written, but it's easily convertible so we can see how it works later. Uh, but here we have a couple of creation methods, which are the methods that uh, we're interested in because we're creating a new dialogue. We have two methods available, the default dialogue that doesn't have anything. So we need to then manually add everything else. And then a dialogue with buttons, which is a, it's a sub method to create a dialogue with some preset information in it. And we're going to use this. And of course, here we have something that is slightly confusing, especially at the beginning. We have this uh, dot, dot, dot. So these three dots. So basically, um, this is, is to represent the fact that this method accepts as many options and flags as you need until you end up by writing a null parameter like is, is written here in the description. But let's slow down a little bit and let's see how it works. Let's access back our code editor. And here we can extend these uh, creation method by using these with underscore buttons. The first option that we need to specify is the title string and it has to be a string. So we need to write it in uh, double quotes and the string can be anything, but we can uh, say, for example, add a new uh, note, something like that. Pretty straightforward. The second option is the parent window. So where is this dialogue generated from? Like who owns this dialogue? And we can say, simply say this to reference the header bar or the header area, but it's not really correct. Actually, technically the entire window owns these dialogue. So let's use the main window variable since we're passing the main window to the generation of the header bar. We can say that this dialogue belongs to the main window. So that's its parent. Now here we need to specify a bunch of flags and the flags are necessary to customize the look and feel of the dialogue and its behavior by default. If you access the documentation, once again, we have these options here to specify some flags called dialogue flags. These are GTK dialogue flags. If we open it, we notice that we have some just three options available. 
uh, we can specify if we want to destroy the dialog with the parent, which we definitely want to do it. Uh, we want to make it a modal, so we can construct it as a modal, or we want to use even the actions that usually are at the bottom of the um, dialog uh, inside the header bar, like the uh, Advaita theme uses whenever you have a dialog, you have the action area in the header. So let's actually define all of these three options. In order to define these three options, we need to specify all the flags separated by a pipe character. So let's say once again, this flag is going to be a GTK dialog flags. And I want to specify that these has to behave as a model, then pipe to separate the other GTK dialog flags. And these option, I want these to be destroyed with the parent as well. So if we close the parent window, which in our case is the main window, this dialog should be destroyed, shouldn't remain open. Another pipe to connect the last one, which is the GTK dialog flags, use underscore header underscore bar. And I'm not sure this will work with uh, Elementary US, but Let's give it a try. So now we have this dialog. Let's be sure to remember to specify that we want to show all. So show all to this dialog. The show all uh, method is basically a method available almost to any GTK widget. And the dialog is, of course, a GTK widget, is a child of the GTK widget class. The show all, it's necessary to ensure that this dialog will be completely visible. If we save this file, and we access our terminal and we compile Ninja, we're not gonna have any error, but if we uh, actually trigger Jarvis, uh, something weird happened, look what we have here. We have our little dialogue that uh, it's kind of weird, like it presents itself by default, is not connected to the add button. So yeah, it doesn't really work. So the thing that we have to do, we have to actually connect this dialog show all and also the dialog present method when the button is clicked. So we can simply do here the add button, that is the button that we have in the header bar, we want to connect the click method or when it gets clicked, we want to trigger the opening of the dialog. So we can say add button on clicked, which is a built in signal that gets emitted by the button, we want to connect a uh, method or actually let's connect the arrow function and inside this arrow function we can specify that the dialog should show all and also the dialog should present itself perfect now if we once again open the terminal and we do a ninja so if we run again our application now uh, the dialogue you can see is not there, but if we click add, the dialogue will appear. And of course, it's super ugly because we didn't specify anything. We don't have the content, we don't have the buttons, we just have the window decoration that reflects our desktop environment. Uh, but you have to notice something. If we now close the dialogue and we try to open it again by clicking add, boom, we're gonna have a ugly container opening here and a bunch of messages in the terminal. If we try to interact with the window, we're gonna have a lot of GTK critical failure. So we need to interrupt the execution of Jarvis by hitting Control C in the terminal itself. This is an issue because the dialogue actually, when we close it, it doesn't get destroyed. The dialogue is still, still there, it's still there, the, the variable is still there, and we cannot call it again because when we close a dialogue, it basically removes itself from the window parent, and then we try to open it again after it was removed. It's kind of weird for GTK to do this. So the easiest solution is to actually uh, move the generation of the dialogue inside a method. So whenever we need a dialogue, it basically creates a new one by default, and that's the way to do it. So let's uh, actually copy all of this. Uh, actually, let's cut it out. So control X that let's create a new publicly accessible void method that it means void, it doesn't have to return anything doesn't have to return a boolean, a string or anything else. And let's call this method like open dialog, for example, we don't need to pass any parameter to this method. And here we can uh, paste uh, all the things that we cut. So the uh, creation of the dialog variable with all the information that we specified before, and then uh, let's cut also these and let's put it here right at the bottom. So whenever we 
call this open dialog, a new dialog will be generated and then it's going to be show and present. So we show in all the content and it's inside the dialog and then we present the dialog in the first place, like as a first accessible widget. Now, the only thing that we have to do, we need to connect the button to the open dialog method. So we can actually, since it's a, a simple method and we don't need to pass any parameter, we can completely avoid the error function here and directly call the open dialog method. Now, if we do that, we save it, we access our terminal, we clear the terminal from all those scary messages, we type ninja, and then once again, we launch Jarvis, add, perfect the dialog is open. If we close it, we click add again, the dialog is open again, and we don't have any problem. We can open it and close it as many times as we want. Perfect. Now let's define a little bit of things. Let's define a visible title inside, uh, some content, and also a, a couple of default buttons. So when we generate a dialog here, let's remember from the documentation that in the uh, with buttons here, we have, yes, the flags, but the flags are not the last parameter. We have some dot, dot, dot. So we can specify extra parameters in order to customize our dialog the way we want. And the extra parameters that we can specify there are basically all the buttons that we want to add in that area. And the button can be customized with a string or uh, an ID for a response of the button, or actually tapping the default GTK response type if we don't want to customize the type of button. So let me show you what I mean. So after the use header area, let's uh, write a comma. And then here, uh, if we want to, for example, uh, create a custom button. We can um, first declare the name of the button. So for example, custom button, whatever. And then as a second parameter for that custom button, we need to specify what type of uh, uh, ID, what type of integer number returns when the button is clicked. Every button needs to return an ID in order to match properly with the response that we're expecting. Let's say that this button returns one. If we don't want to specify any more buttons, we can write the null value. If we want to specify more buttons, we can once again specify the string inside the button. So second button, something like that. And then the ID that needs to return two. And then to stop, to say to the program, these are the two custom buttons I want to specify, just write null. If we run our program once again, ninja, and then Jarvis, and then we open our dialog. Look what we have here. We have two buttons that if we open and enlarge the area are in the header area. So we have the second button and the custom button, the two that we specify. We're going to see how to handle the response in future videos, but let's continue customizing this area. Another thing that we can do, uh, we can remove uh, the header bar. Um, flag. So if we don't want the buttons in the header bar, automatically these buttons will end up in the bottom area. Oops, sorry, I forgot a comma and my terminal is screaming at me. So yeah, don't forget commas. So if we open our dialog, now the buttons are in the bottom area, not in the header area and are properly styled with the Elementor OS GTK style sheet. Now let's see how to add some content in this uh, newly generated dialog because it's, it's completely um, empty. So let's say, for example, I want to create a label. So var label and this label is going to be a new GTK label with some text in there. So uh, this is the content of my dialog, something like that. Uh, in order to inject this label or to add this label inside the dialog, we need to tap the content area of the dialog. So we can specify a new variable called content underscore area, or you can call it however you want, doesn't really matter. Then it's going to be equal to the dialog and we need to use the built-in method get content area of the dialog. By doing that, basically we are accessing the body of the dialog and now these widget, this container, this variable can be used as a regular GTK widget. So we can say, hey, in the content area, add the label. There you go. Now let's access back our terminal, Ninja, and then launch Jarvis, add. Now we have our little dialog with the content and then two custom buttons. That's pretty neat, isn't it? Yeah?
it looks super ugly still. So in the next lesson, we're gonna see how to better customize the dialog, how to change the border, the alignment, make it resizable or not, how to use some primary buttons like save or cancel, or some like red buttons to warn the user of a, a wrong action. And we're gonna improve the overall experience by creating a dedicated class for this dialog in order to have a, a better object-oriented approach to our application and better manage our code. But that's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.